What's going on everybody, C4 here. Welcome back to the channel and today, hope you're having a great weekend. We are doing the most requested rebuild now that I've done the Jets. And that is my beloved Philadelphia Eagles. I got the, got the starter jacket on, the lights green. It's time to rebuild the Eagles. Get them back to that 2017 season. And we got to work it out for us. We got an inexperienced head coach in Nick Sirianni. No, you're not a football casual if you didn't know who he was before Philadelphia signed him as their head coach. I'm not going to lie. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm sold on the guy. I don't. I'm not going to just be a salty fan and be like, it's not the guy, head coach I wanted, so I'm not going to back him. Let's, let's, I'm going to give him benefit of the doubt. Hopefully he's really good. But I will just say, I feel like he got hired because he would offer the least resistance to our very toxic front office. But that's, you know, we got to wait and see. Uh, the biggest thing is we look big picture for Philadelphia, and this has been their issue the last couple of years, is that they have terrible salary cap situation for a rebuild. Pretty much after that first season, you are going to have to make some drastic cuts to your team. And I'm expecting that that's probably what's going to happen here today sooner than later. But that just makes the rebuild that much more sweet and that much more rewarding come year three, year four, and year five when we're ready to win another Super Bowl. So looking at the team, uh, I already kind of went through it after we recorded. I got rid of Nick Mullins. Um, you know, after that salary cap, uh, you know, it does not from a salary cap standpoint. It's from how bad he made me feel in that preseason game the other night against the Patriots. He was so bad. So we just got rid of him. We got the elite Joe Flacco as a backup. But Jalen Hurts... Is QB1 this season for Philadelphia? Now, I do have a nice video that did well for me, reacting to Jalen Hurts becoming the pick of the Eagles. Since then, he's grown on me from an off-the-field standpoint. I think he's incredibly easy to root for. A very good guy off the field. On the field, still very much skeptical. But I would say I'm hoping for the best, preparing for the worst. Because, you know, Jalen Hurts, it, uh, it is what it is. You watched the Saints win last year. You had the Cardinals game where it's like, okay, you know, he can hang. And then you had like the Dallas game where it's like, okay, Dallas has a historically bad defense. They just kind of put him and made Jalen Hurts one-dimensional and he couldn't overcome it. So he's a quarterback that so far I've seen limitations that are like, that guy's not a franchise guy. But I've also seen enough to be like, I, you, you know, you, how can you not pull for him to be be the guy? So, you know, especially, you know, when, you, when you're talking about the quarterback situation for Philadelphia – it's like, all right, we got a guy here that might not be the most talented, but super easy to root for. Or what, do we get Deshaun Watson? Like, it's going to be very difficult to root for a Deshaun Watson if something like that came to fruition. Or do they just suck this year with Jalen Hurts? If he sucks, then we have a high draft pick and we get a Howell or a Rattler or Malik Willis or whoever in 2022. Or if you ask me, I would take a high pick next year. I would trade it and just try to load up for picks for 2023 so you get... Uh, the Clemson quarterback that's going to be an absolute a a animal when he comes to the NFL. But either way, for this rebuild, we're going to give Jalen Hurts a chance, but things don't start looking good. Uh, I have no issues dropping, you know, jumping off the Jalen Hurts hype train and bringing in another quarterback. Running back room. I like the running back room. It's good from a Madden standpoint. Miles Sanders is really good from a Madden standpoint. In real life, I wish he wasn't so bad at catching the football, but between the tackles, yeah, I mean, he's electrifying. He can break off a big play here or there, has the star dev trait. So, you know, in today's NFL, not every team has a Derrick Henry. We have one guy that has to be the guy. And while we have Boston Scott, who's awesome, and we got, you know, veteran Jordan Howard, who's pretty solid still. He feels like he's been around forever. He's only 26. Huntley, you know, I like Huntley when we got him, post him from the uh, Lions practice squad last year. But the guy is Kenny G. Kenny Gainwell was maybe my favorite pick. You know, Devontae Smith, that, that seems too easy to be like, hey, my first pick, the first pick for the Eagles was my favorite pick. I think Kenny Gainwell was an outstanding pick. He has an incredible set of hands. He's a very good receiving back and complements the biggest weakness to Miles Sanders. So for this rebuild, I I'm going to try and go with Sanders and Gainwell for as long as I can. Uh, that is the plan there for that room. At wide receiver, we get the Heisman Trophy winning Devontae Smith, 75 with a hidden dev trait. We know the dev trait. I'm not going to spoil it. I think it's an incorrect dev trait to give him. But, you know, he's still a really good player. And, and from, you know, you look at some of the great wide receivers we've had, you know, Deshaun Jackson, but he was, he was one-dimensional, pretty much. He was a deep threat. You had Macklin, yeah. Going back all the you know, T.O. Was, was really, really good. I, I think there's a chance. From a pure talent standpoint, Devontae Smith could be the best, most talented wide receiver we've had since T.O., excluding just, you know, because, you know, De Deshaun was, was one-dimensional. From, like, an impact standpoint, he, you know, hopefully he can be the most impactful wide receiver we've had since Deshaun Jackson. But in terms of overall talent, I, I think it could be... You know, comparing him to T.O. And I'm very excited to see what Devontae Smith can do for Philadelphia. I uh, was very happy with that selection. Especially, you know, after, you know, Philly did trade back and all this stuff. We could have got Jamar Chase or Jalen Waddle. 
But staying at that spot, we wouldn't be able to get either one of them. And Devontae Smith, that is a great consolation prize from that draft. We have Fulham, who was really hot for a couple weeks last year. And then he's kind of, I mean, we don't really know. We don't really know what we have here with Fulham. But he's also, it's not that we have him on the hook for a lot of money. So it's, it's very much take a wait and see approach. Greg Ward's a solid slot wide receiver. We have Jalen Rager, who, you know, if you follow me on Twitter, we like to have a little bit of fun with Jalen Rager. And there's a whole, we got him over Justin Jefferson, yada, yada, yada. It's kind of like Jalen Hurts in a way, where it's like, all right, I'm hoping he does good. There's not one player on this team except this 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 guy, Jalen Rager, I want him to do well. There's no one on the Philadelphia Eagles that I'm just like, I think you suck, and I want that confirmation bias that you suck, and I'm not going to root for you. I want Jalen Rager to be like, I saw everything that Justin Jefferson did. I saw everything that everybody said, and I'm going to have you know a breakout year this year. So for the standpoint of this rebuild... From the standpoint of this rebuild, Devontae Smith, Jalen Rager, and Quez Watkins. Quez Watkins had a huge preseason. I liked him. I would say last year, and I was pretty public, publicly vocal about this, I like Quez Watkins where we got him a lot more than Jalen Rager in the first round. So for this rebuild, Quez Watkins, Jalen Rager, and Devontae Smith are going to be my starting wide receivers. These are going to be the guys I'm going to try to grow as a wide receiver room. And, you know, I'm not going to force it. If things start to not look great, one of these guys starts to underperform, we then can decide to move on, but that's kind of my plan right now. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, there's no proven established guy in this wide receiver room, but I do think Philly is a very interesting wide receiver room, and I think fans could be excited for that. Tight end room, we got Dallas Goddard. It's his turn to finally break out, be that tight end one. Uh, I think he's good. I think he's a very well-rounded tight end. Absolutely has all the, the skill set to have a breakout season and be regarded as maybe a fringe top five tight end in real life and for sure in this rebuild. What to do with Zach Ertz? I, I threw him up on the trade block. We're going to see if we can potentially trade him. I mean, maybe the best tight end Philadelphia's ever had. But very expensive. And we don't really need two tight ends for a rebuild. So I'm going to try and move on from Zach Ertz. We'll see what kind of trades come through. And say we get to the end of the preseason, there's nothing good. I may manually trade him. Something realistic that won't make everyone upset right away. Offensive line, we have Mylata. I'm going with him as my franchise tackle. We're just going to try to make my franchise tackle. I took Andre Dillard, who was a first-round pick two years ago. And much like Zachary, just threw him on the trade block. Let's see what kind of value we can get for him. You know, I'm not going to force anything, but if we can get a good pick, why not, right? Why not see if, if there is a, a market there? We have Seamala left guard, but we're 100% going Laner Dickerson. Still a little upset again. It's just me being a hipster, but draft hipster, and who I think Philly should draft. I would have went JOK. Uh, or uh, the, the linebacker for the Browns, but we decided to go later Dixon, 71 with a hidden dev trade. So it's pretty easy that we're going to slide him in there to left guard as a day one starter. I mean, he can play center as well. So really, he could be the heir to Jason Kelsey whenever that time comes. But right now, we'll play him at left guard. We have Jason Kelsey, who, in my opinion, first of all, get this man a face scan. Second of all, I think he's the best center in the NFL. But for a rebuild standpoint, from the center to the whole right side of the offensive line, not great for what we're trying to do here in today's video as a rebuild, because Kelsey is kind of old, kind of expensive. Brandon Brooks, kind of old, kind of expensive, still very good. One of the best right guards in football, 92 superstar. And then we have my brother from another, my Lane Johnson, 88 overall with that superstar dev trade, but he's 31 and very expensive. So, I mean, we're obviously going to ride these guys into the ground, but, you know, what? <laughs> put it this way. If we ever come to a spot where it's like, all right, we want to try to re-sign somebody, or there's a really good-looking free agent that would fit in well with Philadelphia, and we can't afford them, just remember this, this side of the offensive line. That's probably the biggest reason why. Defensively, we did bring over Kerrigan. We got Jackson there in the draft. But we got BG, Brandon Graham here. Had a, maybe statistically his best year in the NFL last year. So he's aging like a fine wine. 85 star. We'll rock and roll with him. On defensive end, we have Derek Barnett, who's 76 with the normal dev. And then Josh Sweat, who a lot of people have primed for a breakout year. 76 with a star dev. So we're going to be giving definitely Josh Sweat the starter amount of reps. Because he has, you know, he's a year younger and has that dev trait. To get more XP. Inside, I mean, generally, I think Philly's D-line is getting slept on. I think they are one of the better defensive lines in the NFL. Fletcher Cox, 94, superstar X-Factor. Has the fearmonger ability. Hopefully, he's going to be 100% healthy. Because 100% healthy Fletcher Cox is, is really dominant, I think, you know, very much. A healthy Fletcher Cox is... If you have view Aaron Donald as a defensive tackle, he's clearly defensive tackle one. I think Fletcher is right there at defensive tackle two. We have Javon Hargrave who uh, finished out the last year strong. We paid him big money, come over in free agency from the Steelers. He's an 80 star, 28. So, I mean, from an eight standpoint, not great for a rebuild, but I do think he's a solid player. We got Milto William, who uh, is another guy I like, 70 with the normal dev. Um, from 
the preseason so far. I didn't really like the pick where we made it. It was just like kind of like a classic Howie pick. We had bigger needs than getting a third defensive tackle. But so far in the preseason, he's played kind of like Michael Bennett for us back in the well, a couple years ago, where it's like, all right, he plays D tackle, he plays defensive end, a little bit of both, and he's an insane athlete. You know, you're getting a guy that's you know 280 with 80 you know 80 plus speed, 80 strength. He's an absolute hoss, and uh, I think that was actually kind of a good pick for Philadelphia. So the D-line is good. Linebacking core is, you know, not as good. We have Avery, who we traded, I think it was a fourth-round pick to the Browns to get him. 68, no dev. Patrick Johnson, eh, you know. Linebacker's not a, not a strength for Philadelphia. If Eric Wilson, we got coming over from the Minnesota Vikings. Solid player, 76, normal dev. Uh, good user, if you were actually going in and playing with him. So, you know, he's solid. We have right outside linebacker. We have Alex Singleton, Davion Taylor, Jacoby Stevens. You know what, actually, I'm going to do? Okay, first of all, this guy here. I do not mean to be mean, but this guy is so bad. He's like the middle way. I think I would say arguably Nick Mullins and that guy have been like the two worst players in this preseason. But looking at this from a Philadelphia Eagles standpoint, I think what we're going to do is we're going to take Davion Taylor here. We're going to make Davion Taylor left outside linebacker because he's, he's going to go into his second year. A really good skill set. Really fast. Really good athlete. So let's go Alex Singleton, former CFL Defensive Player of the Year. He's been a beast for Philly. And I actually love the Jacoby Stevens selection as well. But we're going to go Singleton, Eric Wilson, and we'll go Davion Taylor for our linebackers across the board. Uh, I feel like we'll just try that, see what can happen. I mean, TJ Edwards is kind of solid as well, but not a great athlete. But I will say at the end of the day, big picture for this linebacking room. I don't have any, you know, if we can get upgrades in offseason, we get upgrades in the draft, we're going to have to. Because these guys, I mean, Singleton, 27, how much more is he going to grow? Right? Eric Wilson, 26, 76. You know, maybe, but still, how much more is he going to grow? And then, the, you know, the left side, it's not great. Into the secondary, we have big play, Darius Slay, 88 superstar. He's good. You know, he had a couple bad games last year, but generally speaking, you know, he's still a very good corner. We signed Steven Nelson a little bit late in the free agent period. He's 81 star. Uh, Vontae Maddox, solid, you know, versatile, moving back into the slot, 77 with a star dev trait. From a Madden standpoint, you know, he probably is going to be here for the entirety of the rebuild. Seymour, Scott, McPherson, I mean, the rest of the corner room is not, you know, not a whole lot to write home about. Um, free safety of Anthony Harris, who was an absolute bargain, getting him coming over from the Minnesota Vikings, 81 star. But he's 29, so from a rebuild standpoint, it's not the best. Strong safety, Rodney McLeod coming off the injury. Um, again, you know, maybe Kayvon Wallace can be something, but definitely another position you kind of circle Philadelphia is like, if we can get, you know, there's usually a handful of safeties in every draft that are going to be pretty impactful safeties. Kind of move that towards the top of the list for Philadelphia. Kicker, we have Jake Elliott, kind of expensive. He's not really the best. And then this Sipos punter, 20, you know, hey, the, one of the oldest guys that has one year experience in the league. He's 28 already. So for Philadelphia, we have our three. I love the fact they gave Philly that first round pick already for Carson Wentz. I have not touched this. This is just fresh out the box, loading franchise mode. We have three first round picks in 2022. So if things don't go well this year, it's not the end of the world because with how I've drafted so far in my Madden 22 rebuilds, we're going to make the most out of those picks. So without further ado, Let's get into year one of the Madden 22 Philadelphia Eagles rebuild. We're able to find a trade partner. This one actually kind of makes a lot of sense from uh, what are we giving up. The Pittsburgh Steelers don't have a whole lot of clarity at tight end. You have Ebron, who's kind of inconsistent. They got Friarmouth, but it wasn't a big-time investment. Someone like Zach Ertz immediately comes in and improves that tight end spot. He's tight end one. They got Dillard. They're trying to rebuild that offensive line. I was able to kick in a fourth-round pick to get this trade over the line. We're getting a second-round pick as well as Presley Arvin. What an impressive debut. Then the, the, the Hall of Fame game had insane punts. We get an upgrade at punter and a second-round pick just to kind of go all in in the upcoming draft. So there is our trade. Thank you for everything. Zach Ertz, Dillard, eh, not so much. So midway point, great point to interject. Had a dev trade scenario upgrade for Josh Sweat. Now people have been saying C4 um, dev trade scenarios are bugged right now. I don't, yeah, you know, it's one of those things like, do we just not trigger dev trade scenarios? Like, do, I don't interact with them. Like, that's, ah, oh, what a, fix it, Madden. I've, I've put this way. For anyone that's been worried, I have reached out. I have reached out to my extent of pull and said that I think that's an issue. I think it's a bug. But I will reap the reward at least for this one time with Josh Sweat. I mean, he could have hit it to be completely, let's take a look here. Uh... Oh, look at that game results. Do I want to look though? I don't even feel like I want to look. We lost. We'll just, I just want, I just, 
until I know there's a fix. From here on out, I won't I won't talk to the breakout snares, which is lame. But we know they're bugged, and it's just easier than having like you know have a bunch of cheesy dev trait guys. And you know it, it is one of those things like all right, we just got a cheesy potential dev trait for Josh Sweat. Now I gotta try to resign him. You know it's only just made it more difficult on myself. So let's start with the contracts. First, we'll start with Dallas Goddard here because we moved on from Zach Ertz. Clearly need Dallas Goddard to stick around. I think Josh Sweat hitting on that dev trait need him to stick around. I'm going to give him, honestly, a five-year deal. 58 million bucks, get him locked and loaded. I think Avante Max, great from a standpoint like that. You know, he's going to be a solid Madden corner for us. So I'll give him a three-year deal. I think Eric Wilson, solid middle linebacker. Um, I want to bank that at least one of our middle linebackers at the end of the year might just go up dev trait organically because they've played so many snaps. Uh, look at the rest of the team. I'm definitely going to throw a contract to Mylotta. I probably will throw one at Singleton as well for the same regard and line of thought as Eric Wilson. I think Singleton could sneak on a dev trade here or there. Um, so, I mean, now looking at the other guys, I mean, Harris, short term, 19 million bucks, four years, he's 29. Not really interested in that. Steven Ellis, another interesting contract, but I feel like. With one of our three first-round picks, we'll probably target a corner. I got a couple first-round corners there. I'm going to give Kelsey, obviously, contract extension. See, so we'll take a two-year, just a less than the cap hit, just a little bit. Um, but we definitely will come back to the table here with Dallas Goddard. But rest of the contracts, until we can you know open up discussions for sure with Mylotta, they're going to be on hold. So at the end of the first season, not great. 4-13, last place in the NFC East. But we have three first-round picks, and one of those picks is the number one overall pick. So uh, our scouting's pretty good. I think we'll have no problem maximizing our draft capital. We'll say that. Um, I mean, okay, that's, I mean, looking at the, the big picture here, people always want me to look at that. I, I absolutely can squeeze this in because it shows you everything. Like We got seven picks there. Jimmy Smith leading the league. Khalil Mack, 21 sacks. Donald and Miles Garrett there. Mike Evans. Led the league, 125 catches. Good God, Zeke, 26 touchdowns, 1,800 yards. And Tom Brady, just insane passing numbers. But I want to more so know, what about our guys? Jalen Hurts, fourth in yards, 12th in touchdowns. That's actually not brutal. Interceptions, though, that's just way too many. You can't, you can't have 24 picks. There's just no way, shape, or form you can justify throwing 24 interceptions. Um, but I will say it's not screaming to me that we have to get a quarterback right away. Or like at least our first pick has to be a quarterback. I feel like you turn, you know, you turn some of those interceptions down. Even, even, I mean, obviously even 10, 10 would be a, a considerable amount. But like you shave off six, seven, eight. You know, that's a great stat line from Jalen Hurts. So I, I don't know. We'll see what the draft holds. We got eight, 800 yards, 11 touchdowns from Miles Sanders. It's not, you know. Again, rushing numbers there generally aren't good for Philadelphia. Receiving, 77 catches, 1,000 yards, 7 touchdowns for Devontae Smith. Great numbers for a rookie. 1,000 yards, 6 touchdowns for the dude Quez. 9-5 and five for Goddard. Uh, 860 and 8 for Jalen Rager. So everyone pretty much 8 on this team, for sure. I mean, you combine the yardage yards from scrimmage for Gainwell and Sanders. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not a bad offense. Defensively, Alex Singleton led the team 129 tackles. We had 11 sacks, Fletcher Cox. 10.5 Brandon Graham, 18 TFLs, 4 and a half sacks for a new superstar. Dev trade edge rusher Josh Sweat got himself a new contract as well. On the interceptions front, not great. Two picks, Darius Slay, two for Maddox, two for Anthony Harris, couple singles. Uh, I mean, obviously, what people want to see. What about Thick Boy Punter? What did he do? Uh, 52 yard average. It's actually really good. That might be like tops in the league. I want to see that. I mean, maybe not, but that, that's not bad at all. Okay, definitely not tops in the league. But it's up there. He's like a you know, good punter. He's a good punter. Look at the awards here around the rest of the league. Alvin Kamara is the MVP. He was just dominated by running backs this year. In the NFC for individual awards, Kamara, Kilomack, defensive player, the offensive rookie, they went to Justin Fields. Devontae Smith, runner up there at number two. Kenny Gainwell coming in at number six. Defensive rookie, they went to Jamin Davis. I don't really think we'll probably have anybody there, no, unfortunately. Uh, come on, show me some Eagles. Show the Eagles some love here. At least one. Give me one guy. One guy, please. That's all I'm asking for. One. Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham, 7 and 8 for defensive linemen. Best linebacker. We don't have anyone sniffing any of these awards. 
kicker maybe jake elliott number four it's fine i mean we had to just look at the awards because we were the worst team in the nfl this season hopefully that's not what's going to happen in real life to philadelphia but let's go our first off season this is a very big off season trying to go from the worst team in the nfl to just not being the worst team in the nfl next season so i wanted to peep in look for dev traits ahead of the super bowl and oddly enough jalen hurts went up a dev trait i i feel like there's enough he uh, there's enough here for me to say we should give Jalen Hurts a chance, but there's also a couple QBs that look pretty good in the draft. Well, again, we have the first pick. We'll have our, our pick of whatever prospect we want. On the defense side of the ball, we saw the dev trade for Josh Sweat. Outside of that, Singleton. There we go. Singleton, I'm glad we gave him that contract. He went up to a star dev. That's pretty cool. But as you can see, with all the negatives, it's, it's generally a team that's not really uh, feeling too good about their performance this season. But, you know, your last place. That's that's kind of what's going to happen. So to get a yearly summary here, for the recap in the Super Bowl is the Saints and the Chiefs. The Chiefs won. Patrick Mahomes is your MVP. Now it's time for the offseason. And here's the fun with rebuilding Philadelphia. We have a million bucks. We have a million dollars of salary cap. So, uh, and there's like no, like you look at our squad, there's no real contracts here that I think we could just, you know, it's one of those things, I don't really think there's any contracts that we could shift off the books that is going to drastically allow us to spend a lot more money in free agency. Like, looking at this, okay, there's not, like, Siumalu, I guess. There's a couple bucks there. Again, not a lot, but, I mean, it gets us a little bit of breathing room. You're not getting rid of Brandon Brooks. You're not getting rid of Brandon Graham. On the inside, you're still probably going to keep... I mean, Javon Hargrave didn't do much. How much... We'll give it to Javon Hargrave just from the standpoint that he's already regressed. And let's see what Milton Williams can do. You know, what's the worst thing to have? You're playing next to Fletcher Cox. Maybe he can make you look a lot better than what than what you are. I, I don't know. That's just, that's just kind of the logic there. And other than that, I mean, that's as much money as we could possibly scrape to get a little bit of bucks. So that gives us, what, $15 million? 19? Okay, I'll, let me take a look. I'll see what happens. This is the only one I thought about doing because I actually wanted Philly to get Van Der Esch when he was coming out. But Davion Taylor went up Dev Trade too. 68. I just feel like we don't have a lot of salary cap. Why, you know, There's no rush to spend it this offseason. We are completely rebuilding. Let's see what we can get with our three first round picks because it could be a position like, for example, we signed Van Der Esch here, spend all of our money. And then in the draft, the clear guy we should select early on is left outside linebacker. You know, we're back stuff into a hole. There's no risk in saving this money and then spending it a lot more next offseason because we have so much in terms of high draft capital this year. I think we're just going to save it. All right, it's draft time with the number one overall pick. I mean, okay, here's the thing. We like Jalen Hurts at least enough to improve, and there's no early first-round talent quarterback. There's some good ones. I mean, this guy looks good. Terrence Jackson, 6'4 combine, A-plus throw power, throw the run, fits my play style. But he's only a mid-first-round talent. Uh, we got a mid-first rounder, Joel Davis, OK State. We have Hillman, quarterback, late first from Ole Miss. Like, neither, none of those guys there are screaming, like, can't miss first overall pick, right? And, and given the fact Jalen Hurts went up dev trade, cuts down on the interceptions, I'm at least willing. If, if there was a QB here that was early first rounder that you knew was going to be probably 78 hidden dev or 79 hidden dev, 77 hidden dev, I'd pull the trigger. And definitely we'll remember Terrence Jackson's name because we'll, we'll go check and just see what he's dealing with, because this, this is really the only guy. And hey, Joel Davis, second round, if we're there in the second round, sure. You know, I, I'll grab this guy, mid-first rounder, but um, I'm looking at the rest of the draft here. I have a couple of gems for sure. We have McQueen, late first round, center, third rounder. Like, that could be, you know, the, the heir to Jason Kelsey when we keep Landon Dickerson at left guard. Um, defensively, this is the guy that's looking pretty juicy. Dean Finley from LSU. Early first round, the combine's absolutely insane. I think you then look into the secondary where we have Kevin Rutledge, early first round corner. Could also, you know, I, I think the logic here is like who's who's the best player out of the corner. I mean, the, the skills here for the corner is pretty good. A uh, A minus man, B plus awareness, B plus zone. We have another corner in Bobby Dillon, another early first rounder. I mean, we could double dip if we want. This guy here looks great. This is probably our best value pick of the draft because we do need a strong safety. And he's a mid-first rounder in the third, so we could probably grab that in the second. But we have three first-round picks. We pick at one. We have one and two. One and two. All right, we're going to grab Dean Finley and then that corner. We have one and two. 
Dean Finley is the first overall pick. 80 hidden dev, number two in true value. We got him at number one. I'm feeling that corner there might be number one. Might be. Um, this looks pretty absurd. We have the successor in the air to Brandon Graham. 87 speed, 90 acceleration, 83 tackle, 82 finesse move, 85 strength, 88 agility, 81 pursuit. That's a bad man right there. That is a bad, bad man. And then I think he was just followed up with the corner, man. Yeah, he's not like, looks at the overall big board. He's the number two player on the big board. He's, he's the guy that clearly fits a big need for us, especially because we did not re-sign Steven Nelson. So we need someone to play with Maddox and Darius Slay. So Kevin Rutledge from Oklahoma is going to be our second. Can we number one? Yes, we did it. One and, I mean, come on. If I didn't get one and two with picks one and two, I'd feel disappointed. 81 hidden dev. It's what I do, man. I don't think there's a better, I mean, it's, I'm not, it's not hard. It's not rocket science, but I, I, I would argue that. I don't know if there's a better drafter. I'm calling out Perrin Crow, I guess. Draft Wars. 92 speed, 93 acceleration, 82 man, 80 zone, 90 jumping, 76 catching. There you go, Philly. We got a fran. We got just in one draft already. Franchise edge rusher, franchise lockdown corner. We still got one more first round pick. And then maybe, like, you know, that second round pick's going to be interesting. Do we go strong safety? Do we have a QB? Let's see what happens. I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna grab the strong safety here because we need a strong safety. I want to make sure there's no other ones that we had scouted that that fit that. Yeah, because I just don't like the optics of drafting a quarterback in the first round when we when we want to commit to Jalen Hurts. Let's let's pull let's pull what Philly did to Carson Wentz on Jalen Hurts. We're not gonna get a first round pick on a QB, but we'll spend a second round pick on a QB if he's here. So we're gonna have Jarek Ward, strong safety from Clemson, good combine skills you know you don't like seeing hit power there but he's a mid first round talent and he is 76 normal dev number 11 in true value getting him at 25 90 speed we have 78 tackle 77 pursuit 77 but he's a solid player uh, would have been nice to have the dev trait but you know with our first two picks you, you, you can get something that's slightly underwhelming here the QB's actually gone now now i'm kind of second guessing myself here like a late first round QB, but I don't want to say these guys grow on trees, but I'm not, I'm not overly, I, I don't necessarily want to need a rush there because we still need a linebacker. We can still get a center. There, there, I mean, there's no one that's screaming like the pick. I, I think we might, it might just be more beneficial to the squad to grab the linebacker. I'm going to do it. 74, hidden dev, Marco Towns, number 20 in true value at 33, 92 speed, 91 acceleration, 86 step. Oh my God. What? This guy's insane. Now we have our second round pick from the Pittsburgh Steelers as part of the Zach Ertz trade. We're going to grab our last first round talent. Get the air to Jason Kelsey. George McQueen from Texas. First round, 73 normal, number 30 in true value. It's not a home run pick. It's not a bad pick, though, and should be, you know, I, I, you know I'm prepared for Kelsey to retire after next year, and we'll have a guy that we can plug right in at center. So a draft recap for what is probably the most stacked draft we'll have all year. We got number one and number two in true talent in that draft. We got a 76 normal dev. We got a 74 middle linebacker with a hidden dev that looks very scary. We got an air successor for Kelsey. Rest of picks, I got Jet middle linebacker here. Great athlete. Pretty sure just a normal dev. He's a 71 morale. Already taking a big hit. But a very good athlete. Just more depth there. I got a 70 normal dev outside linebacker. Then a 66 normal dev safety. That is an S-tier draft. And hey, let's, you know, because we didn't spend any money in free agency, kind of needed this draft to be this impactful, get guys that can get on the field right away and help us next year in year two of this rebuild to not be the worst team in the NFL. But, you know, we'll say it right here. Massive commitment for Jalen Hurts. I need to, we got to go see what that QB was. I don't really care more so about that second quarterback, Terrence Jackson. Let's see what he's working with here. 77 hit in dev. 93 throw power, 91 throw on the run. He looks pretty scary. He's in the division, so we're now dealing with that. Let's get a little sneak peek of that dev trade. But the star dev, I'm not going to be upset if it's superstar. It is superstar. Whew. Where's that other QB? The one that we decided not to get. He would have went in the bottom end of the first round. This guy, Joel Davis, 76 hidden dev. Don't be superstar. Please don't be superstar. Don't tell me. Just so we know, like, year four, year five over Jalen Hurts, we don't have any stability at quarterback that we passed on two superstars. Thank God. But we did pass on one superstar quarterback, and he's going to be in the division, so it's going to be a clear reminder every year for the remainder of this rebuild. Um, hopefully, that hopefully it's a clear reminder that we made the right choice 
and kept with Jalen Hurts. Year two for Philadelphia after maybe the most juice draft we've have maybe ever had. It's it's gotta be up there. So I'm very actually excited to see the change in this team from year one to year two. I mean, as far as like offensive changes, not much. You know, we have the honestly the dev trade that came in was for Jalen Hurts, and he's the guy that we committed to this year. We always gonna keep an eye on that Washington quarterback. So let's just hope, at least for this year, Jalen Hurts cuts down on the interceptions just a little bit and performs better than the QB that is within our division that we decided not to get. Um, but we have, you know, Smith. We're still going to go Smith, Rager, and Watkins would be real nice if one of those guys, you know, obviously we're, we're not going to rock with Dev Trade scenario because that's glitched in bugs and one of the various glitches and bugs that's in Madden 22 right now. It's it's not great. I'll be completely, like, I'm, I'm still kind of working on what is going to be my Madden 22 review. And I, I do think a lot of people are going to think that, like, well, I don't think a lot of people, but maybe the perception is going to be, I'm going to give this game a high score. And while there's so much that is going in the right direction that I'm happy about with franchise mode, there is so many bugs in this game. Like, I, I think people might be surprised when, when, like, I'm still working on it right now. Maybe next week, some point, uh, I think my score might surprise some people. That's all I'm going to say. But going to the defensive side of the ball here, this is where our team got a lot bit better. A lot bit better. Yeah, just a little bit. We got a number one player in the draft in Rutledge, 81, Hidden Dev. We have the successor for Brandon Graham. It's probably going to be BG's last year here, at least especially from like a salary cap standpoint because we don't have a whole lot of money. You know, it might just be beneficial for this to kind of be the last ride for Brandon Graham because we have Finley here, Dean Finley from LSU, 80. Hidden Dev, number two player from that draft. Uh, what I did do, you know, Davion Taylor did go up Dev Trade, as did Alex Singleton, but Towns is just so much, you know, more. The fact that they're like the same, you know, both these guys, young players, young linebackers, 124, uh, but Towns is two years younger, and his skill sets is like the exact same what you get from a Davion Taylor. S tier athlete, 92 speed, 91 acceleration, and, and he's just a better football player at this point with that Dev Trade already. So I just feel like that's probably benefit. And then it comes down to, do we want to play Alex Singleton, who's kind of a fan favorite over a Davion Taylor or, you know, one Singleton, if he doesn't, pro, you know, progress this year, we can just kick it back. We have options. That's what I'm saying. Uh, then we have Ward, another rookie that's getting opportunity to play. Uh, again, sucks that we don't have dev traits on, but I mean, cause I say that'd be, that'd be a question I could just throw up to you guys. Should I just still have dev trade scenarios on? And, and and take them as is, but knowing that they're bugged and like for some reason, pretty much all of them achieve. I I, I, don't, I don't know. That's really up to you guys. I, I feel like the last thing I would want to do is is make like we did with Josh Sweat is just make this rebuild and make all my rebuilds just too overpowered because anytime anyone gets a dev trade scenario, they're going to be going up and hitting it. But I definitely wanted to see your guys' feedback on that one because maybe you could just say, well, the dev trade maybe they're just playing well. From a realism standpoint, you don't really think about the performance grade. Just be like, well, Ward, for an example, he's playing very well as a rookie. And he doesn't necessarily hit his certain stats in a given week. But he probably should go up Dev Trade because he's been putting up big time stats this season. So I, I think there's, you know what, I'm calling it odd. I think from it's easy to justify, you know, a Dev Trade scenario, I, I feel like. I think it's easy to be like, you know what, just throw out the performance Maybe we won't trigger all of them. Maybe maybe I'll be a little more reluctant to trigger ones for guys that are superstars going to a superstar X Factor. But I'm just going to be completely honest with you. While it's bugged, while it's very annoying, not having dev trade scenarios to potentially hit on, it, it kind of kills some of my like my hype within a franchise reel. So I'm going to turn it back on, but we will be incredibly cautious with it. And I'll try to make the best decision for my rebuild, given that, aka, I'm not going to for sure pick every dev trade scenario. But ones that, you know, especially normal to a star, if they're, they're a big-time starter and they're putting up good stats, it kind of makes sense. So, like, here's a scenario where it kind of makes sense to trigger a dev trade because our team's butt cheeks. But this is for a wide receiver. So it's for Devontae Smith to go up. And I think he, all along, you're asking me, Devontae Smith should have a superstar. So we'll see firsthand, you know, the glitch. For those of you that don't know, I actually probably can use this for my review if this happens. So there you go. Devontae Smith. You're hyped because he just got pretty much one of the coolest things that can happen in a franchise mode is, hey, my guy just went from a star to a superstar, and that's unreal. But when you go in, as we're 1-8, we are terrible this year again. 
Looks like we made the wrong decision for the old QB here. We need to go to this. Let's just see. So he needed 150 yards. I guarantee he did not hit that. You know, all, all the different parameters go from a star to a superstar. And he put up, I'll tell you this. It's definitely not five catches, 48 yards would achieve a dev trade scenario for Devontae Smith. Again, I need to reiterate, I have reached out to people to say, this is this. Is this. I've showcased what happens with this buck. Hopefully it gets fixed sooner than later. But doesn't make it, you know, any any less annoying. And it just kind of reiterates the, what is Nick Sirianni wearing? There's no way that's a piece of clothing that should be in the game. All right. Uh, week 10. Think, again, things are not going good for the Philadelphia Eagles. Seems like we uh, pretty obviously made a bad contract decision. Uh, from, well, not, we didn't even resign him. Just a bad roster decision. We're going to hopefully not make any bad contracts. We'll get Miles Sanders locked up here. I think Fletcher Cox is still worth trying to retain on our squad. We'll see if we give him a two-year deal if he wants to stick around. I do think it's, I do think it's end of the road for Brandon Graham, to be honest with our squad. The way things have shaped up, I mean, that's not a bad contract either, but he's just going to get in the way of developing either Josh Sweat or the number two overall player from the last draft class, so we, we did him, we paid him respects. I probably should have played that young rookie over Brandon Graham this year, but we're going to let him have a little bit of a last dance here and uh, re-signing Fletcher Cox and Miles Sanders. Very good for our squad. What also isn't great is, I don't know what the stats are, we'll see at the end, but Washington, with that QB, are 8-2. and two. But we beat them 21-7. Let's go. Let's go. Jalen Hurts knew that was a big game for him. At the end of year two, very, very, very poor for Philadelphia. Three and 14. Niners went 16 and one. We are back to back seasons. The number one overall pick. You know, I kind of hope that when we look at the big picture here, it's a, it's a clear Jalen Hurts is not going to be that guy. Like, I, I don't want to see, oh my God. Okay, we'll see something else in a second. We're going to look at the big picture stats. But yeah, Jalen Hurts, 4,200 yards, 24 touchdowns, 19 picks. So he's just a guy's turnovers, man. He's a turnover machine, and that's he's not elevating our offense, taking the next level. 950 and 4 for Sanders. We don't really have a great complement to the passing game. I mean, that's not bad numbers, but, you know, 3.8 yards per carry, 55 yards a game. You need more. Definitely need more. Devontae Smith. See, look, here, see here's the scenario, right? I, I was kind of hoping that another dev trait breakout scenario would trigger for a guy that's like, I'm not going to go in but like you tell me Devontae Smith puts up 87 catches 1300 yards six touchdowns you know he probably is deserving of a dev trade upgrade from a star to a superstar it's not like we got one for Quez Watkins for example and he, he didn't really have a great year we had eight and six for Rager eight and seven for Dallas Goddard um, again Miles Sanders I mean from a yard from scrimmage he's been very good for us uh, defensively 136 tackles two picks Eric Wilson Towns the rookie linebacker 125 tackles 10 TFLs a sack, three interceptions. We had five picks from Darius Slay, eight sacks, Fletcher Cox, seven and a half for BG, six for Josh Sweat, three and 17 for Dean Finley. That's pretty cool. Interceptions, I like seeing the, the massive uptick there. Five picks for Darius Slay, over 100 tackles. Good for him. This is what you need to see. I think I saw a stat line that I need to second. I need a second. Yeah, what? What? 5,600 yards. 60 touchdowns for Patrick Mahomes. That's disgusting. And even these ones, man. 2,100 yards, Nick Chubb. 24 touchdowns for him and Joe Mixon. Good God. Like, What's going on with the Chiefs here? 15 touchdowns for Auden Tate. Tyreek, 15 touchdowns. Big time numbers there. Defensively, I don't think there's probably going to be anything. Any record breaking? Maybe from a sack... Twenty-eight sacks for Aaron Donald, sixty touchdowns, Patrick Mahomes. It's still the Eagle. We can't get any of that. MVP went to Mahomes. Still not seeing defensive players show up in the MVP because let's be honest, Aaron Donald should be at worst. I'd say top five for for MVP voting there. For individual awards, we might have some rookies. Towns, nice defensive rookie of the year, uh, one and two for that, and then Ward down there at five. For offensive rookie, they went to Joel Davis. He was the second quarterback we kind of passed on over. Jackson was the number one QB 
that we decide to pass on over. It is what it is, man. You got to live with it. And we now need to figure out the quarterback situation as we go into the next offseason. So at the end of year two, the Houston Texans actually defeated the Green Bay Packers 35-28. MVP went to Deshaun Watson on that just really cap off kind of a ridiculous and outrageous season. That's probably is as ridiculous as outrageous you can get. Quick look at our roster just to see if any natural dev traits occurred on the offensive side of the ball. We have nothing on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, Eric Wilson went from a normal to a star dev. And I think that's it. But we have the hidden dev traits that we found out here. Finley's a star. Yeah. But Rutledge is a superstar. That's pretty good. Towns is a star. Ward went up dev trait. He went up dev trait. That's very nice. He was originally just a normal dev rookie. He went up star dev. I don't know what he would have done to achieve that because he wasn't defensive rookie of the year. Must have just been performance-based, which, which is fine. So, yeah, we finished out. We got one superstar, the number one overall player of the draft, 83 superstar for Rutledge. Finley, who's going to be taking over for Brandon Graham, 82 stars. Let's just put him up here now. This is what our D-line's going to look like going into the next season. I mean, come on, man. We're a QB away, it feels like, from, like, at least, at least going above 500 here in year three. I'll be honest, I'm pretty disappointed with the available options because the available option puts me in a tough spot because there's two quarterbacks that I feel like potentially could, like, you know, do I sign Rodgers or Brady in year three? Do I just, we have the number one overall draft. Let's let's just get a QB with the number one overall draft pick. I feel like that, there's just no way, given the worst team in the NFL, that Brady or Aaron Rodgers would sign with the worst team in the NFL. And that also being said, there is no upgrades I, don't, I mean, wide receiver, maybe. we get Ty, Again, Tyreek Hill's not signing for the worst team in the NFL. If we were like a playoff team, fringe playoff team, by all means, I'd be offering a 29-year-old Tyreek Hill a $118 million contract. It just doesn't make sense at this point. Like, maybe someone like, you know, an Auden Tate with the Star Dev or Dante Johnson. But, like, there's, ge there's generally no free agents that are interesting for me whatsoever to sign. So, I think, again, that's just... That's his draft really, really well. And hold on to our salary cap so we can re-sign all of our guys. And then keep carrying that over to future years until we're more of a playoff team and it would make sense to properly invest in the market. All right, we have a decision to make. Great QB draft class here. We have the number one overall pick. We have Timmy Beal, mid-first round talent. I mean, looks pretty good. Things across the board. Uh, Aaron Kovacs from Michigan, early first round talent. Not a dual threat. That's why I'm a little bit worried about our scheme. Because we have this guy, Enrique Belcher, another guy. A little less athletic from Clemson. Try testing the truth. So you look at it, like, what's the difference between the top skills? What do we got? Cam Elliott, who's a mid-first rounder. And down here, we have a second-round quarterback, Jacob Durant from Texas Tech, trying to get the next potential Patrick Mahomes. Way more athletic. But the skills, the break sack, throwing around, that's not necessarily what you're looking for. So it really comes down to Beltran's top skills. They both have the A-plus throw power. That's what you really want. When you're looking for a quarterback, and then it's like A minus throw on the run, A minus uh, mid accuracy, and Kovacs has A minus mid B plus deep throw. So it's like, would I rather throw on the run, or would I rather deep accuracy? I'm feeling like I'm feeling like this is the guy. I wish it was clear cut. I wish but this guy seems a little bit. <sighs> it's a tough one. Man, as, as well as times, which I could pause and just, just pull the room. Um, pocket passer, more of a scrambler. Pocket passer, a little more. Like, and it's not even like more of a scrambler. Like, dude, what's, who's cooler, Aaron Kovacs or Enrique Beltran? They, they both have obscure names. I wish actually Timmy Beals... Was uh, the best one. Mm. Let's go Beltran. 77 hidden dev. We're going to have to look at Kovacs. Hopefully we made the right decision here. This guy looks very good. 93 throw power. 84 deep accuracy. 84 mid. 85 throw on the run. He's aware. He's a smart player. Good athlete. Hopefully we made the right call here. My draft board for the first pick of the second round also looks fairly good. Got a first round uh, guard, first round D end. 
But now these guys are like really, you know, first like early first round talents. Like my work here, defensive ends mid. That's actually not too bad. We don't really need a defensive end. Josh Watt, superstar. We have that other young guy. You know, we, we you know one of the it'd be ideal in a perfect world if Benson or Monroe, especially Benson, because we need that defensive tackle too. Challenge Milton Williams. Perfect world. This guy's gonna be there in the third round. If we'd like to go late third, he might be. But look at this, man. Corners are at a premium. We have an early first round talent corner. Darius Slay's not getting any younger. So I think we go Jalen Wiggins here and hope that D tackle's available on the backside. And look at that. 75, hidden dev, number nine in true value, getting him at 33, 94 speed, 92 acceleration, 72 catching, 73 man. Not so much a technical corner. Got pretty good tackling. 76 hit power. Not bad for a guy that's just going to be, you know, the understudy for Darius Slay. Nice. And the D tackle's still there. Very happy with this. Braylon Benson. Coming in, D-Tan, he's a dev trait, let's go, 73 hidden, I think 73 hidden dev right away would even put him higher than Milton Williams, 31 in true value, 91 strength, 86 acceleration, 79 tackle, 74 block shed, solid player, solid, solid, solid player. Okay, draft recap time, stellar draft, you guys saw the, the premier picks, my draft board was kind of small, she said, uh, so I, I simmed it out after the fourth round. I did. So we saw I got three hidden dev players. Then I got a 71 normal dev wide receiver, 71 normal dev corner patent. Both these guys, great athletes. Uh, height, weight, speed there. This guy here, Stanley Curtis from Texas, 93 speed, 95 acceleration. Catching's not a little, a little bit, you know, eh. Uh, the auto draft didn't, you know, rob me. No one below a 60, which I'm happy with. But the fact that we got three hidden dev rookies again to go with, the two hidden devs that we got last year, and then the safety that developed a dev trait. Like, we're going to be a very good young team on the come up. Let's just hope that this QB's the guy, man. We got to go We gotta go see the other QBs. We got to know the baseline. Because we already know last year we made the wrong decision. We knew that the quarterback that we kept Jalen Hurts over ended up being an ex-superstar. Took the Washington football team to the next round of playoffs. Timmy Beal, let's see what we got here. 75 hidden dev for Timmy Beal. We just got to know we're working with. Know the baseline across the league. This guy here was the number one overall QB prospect. Okay. This was the guy. I don't feel so bad about that one. Even though we saw the X Factor. Because he was never going to be on the right. Uh, he was easily the third best QB that I saw. From just what we know. So this is a guy that I very much. Like it was a coin toss. He is a star. Okay. Star for him. We have Scott, normal dev. Wasn't a great pick, for sure. We have Cam Elliott, 75. You got a hidden dev on this guy. Really good QB class. I suppose if Jalen Hurts was going to suck and we were going to jump off that sinking ship, this was the draft to do it. So we get a star dev there. Uh, and this is probably the last QB. Cam McDonald, normal dev. So, X-Factor, star, what do we have? What are you going to be, sir? Okay, big year. Big year from a standpoint of like, did we pick the right quarterback? But here's where the squad's looking at. That's really the only change on the offensive side of the ball. We've had consistency up front. Not a lot of moving pieces. They're not even regressing too, too bad. Kelsey, Brooks, and Johnson. So I'm actually pretty happy with the, the overall rating regression in Madden 22. To try to find some positives. To, to look beyond the bugs right now in the game. But really, everything does come down to that QB. You know, is Beltran going to be the guy? We know, like, anything less than a superstar dev, he doesn't have to be an X Factor. But you got to be like, we got to have like a 77 superstar here. If he's a star dev trade, that's going to be for sure underwhelming. Uh, defensively, this is the better unit of the two. I have decided to make a change on the defensive side of the ball. So we drafted Benson. He's going to play right away next to Fletcher Cox in the middle of the defense. All of our linebackers have dev traits. It seems like we, we're kind of going to phase out Singleton. We're going to go Davion Taylor, a little bit younger at this point, higher ceiling. Well, what I did do, because we drafted uh, the in the second round Wiggins, the hidden dev corner, I've actually decided to shift Avante Maddox back to safety because we had Kevon Wallace as a starter. And Maddox has played slot, has played safety for the Philadelphia Eagles. Actually, some people definitely in the Eagles fan base think he might be a better safety than he is a corner. So I have no issues there kicking Maddox. I think he's higher ceiling at free safety and just gives us a way to get our best players on the field to maximize all of that XP. But it just comes down to, man, QB. What's his number? Comes down to QB 15 here. 
Enrique Beltran. We decided to go with you, bud. Pay me back. Pay me back. This is, uh, this is an interest. I like. I just want to always see this one. We had a Khalil Mack retirement famously in the Bears. And this time it's Lane Johnson. We got to try to convince him to stay. Hopefully he stays. But I'm at a point also where, you know, we suck. If we can't start winning games, it, it's going to free up some salary cap space for us. So we'll, let's just see what happens, man. See if we can get a couple wins. We got a win right out the gate. Nice. We can beat the Niners, go three and two. I think Lane Johnson might stay. We've got a couple. Okay, we haven't had that scenario pop back up. We've gone one and one since he gave us the ultimatum. We're going against this winless Giants. I, th I think we did enough to kind of chill Lane Johnson on retiring. But if he doesn't retire for this week, I, that's all right. Cool. You, it's not automatic. That's not Buck. That's a great start for franchise right now. I'm out of twenty two. All right, we've won more games than we've lost, and there we go. We actually there's a there's a you know a resolution to this, and Lane Johnson does not want to retire. So Nick Sirianni, and quite possibly the most ridiculous sweater I've ever seen, is able to convince Lane to stick around. All right, I'm trying my best not to see what that QB dev trade is. I want to I want to I want to see at the end of the year. But we're five and four, so he's playing a lot better. Yeah, I'll say right now, this is also kind of the good thing about not seeing that dev trade and being disappointed. We're getting wins with him. So regardless if it's a star, if we end up making the playoffs or being just cusp of making the playoffs, that's way better than where we've been at any other point so far in this rebuild. Looking at our teams that we got here for players that want some new contracts. First up, Kelsey for sure. Uh, we will make sure he can stay around. Darius Slay, we do have a corner that you know should be a successor, but you know, one-year deal, not too, too shabby. Jalen Rager. Give him a chance. People say, hey, Jalen Rager, I'm going to give him another chance here in the rebuild. He's developing nicely. 79, he's only 24. Uh, especially if we can potentially hit a dev trait between now and then. That'd be pretty cool. Quez Watkins, we're going to keep trying to make this a thing. Uh, he's playing well, though. Has the morale boost, which is pretty cool. We have Davion Taylor at linebacker. Let's give him a contract extension. He's kind of earned himself that opportunity to be a starter on the outside. Other than that, I mean, Singleton is probably best to move on there. Same with Wallace. Same with Jalen Hurts. No way we're paying a backup quarterback $70 million. I was thinking about trading him away. I just I just don't necessarily know what the trade market would be for Jalen Hurts. Let's see if I can actually get a pick for him right now. Uh, actually, the trade deadline probably is passed. Could have looked at that. I don't know. That, I also kind of feel like that's a little cheese. That's one of the cheesier aspects. Of, if you were looking and considering a Madden reality had a guy in a contract year, even though those are kind of players you can always trade for, it feels a little dirty trying to trade away a guy knowing that there's zero chance you're going to resign him. But that's also kind of what happens in real life. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I just put respect on Jalen Hurts. We'll let him go gracefully into free agency. We're sending him to the, a terrible situation. I'm doing right by Jalen Hurts. Yes, that's how we're going to phrase this. I got another scenario with old Lane Johnson here about calling it quits, and he wants to finish the season. He has a ratings buff. Cool. What, what does that mean? What is that? Okay, let's, we're going to get a peek here at the QB's dev trade. We're going to open up that door. Please, please be gold. Please be gold. It's not gold. He's not gold, man. He's playing well, but he's not gold. Uh, but yeah, there we go. Lane Johnson, plus four. Cool. Cool. So here's the downside of the dev trade snares. Because you never know what player it is. So here we have Finley, who's our star dev, number two overall player that we had in the draft last year, which were nine and five. Philly's trying to contend for the playoffs. We lost... But look, Dean Finley went up. I'm going to see if we actually achieved it. Did we hold them under 75 yards or did he have a big game? If not, I'm going to revert it. I'll, I'll be a man and we will revert that dev trade. All right, so we did not hold them under 75 rush yards. They had 184. And we're looking for Finley to have uh, in the area of like two sacks, two TFLs, something in that range. He had two TFLs, half sack. Was that Would that be enough to get it? I think it is, right? Isn't it two TFLs? Hey, the kid earned it. Two TFLs. Dean Finley. An authentic superstar. Let's go. And in the year, we actually, we almost lost four in a row. We won the final game against football team. I don't know if that was necessarily the, the tipping point for us making the playoffs or not, but we're here 
And that, you know, again, we're winning. I don't care about the dev trade with that QB. That QB is making us win. Like, we're a solid team. 88 offense, 86 overall. Like, we should be contending for the playoffs here. Looking at the big picture, Joel Davis, the QB he passed on, uh, is dominant. Passing leader there, 5,400 yards, 48 touchdowns. We had about 2,000 yards, 22 touchdowns for Zeke. DK, 1,600 yards, 11 tutties. Defensively, 19 sacks for TJ Watt, taking over for the old broski. Nothing too, too crazy, though. That, that's, you know, there's no 60 touchdowns or anything. Look at that, Beltran. Played well, 4,700 yards, 38 touchdowns, 11 picks. I'll take that, man. I mean, I can't remember where. Okay, that's stupid. Get him out of the game. Uh, Jackson did not have a great year. Which is which is nice. Looking at some of the other, I, would, I just more so want to see the other QBs that we didn't get, but I do not remember what team they went through. So just give me one second here. Um, come on, come on, Aaron Rodgers doing his thing for the Rams. Joel Davis passed on him once upon a time. I mean, some of the QBs that actually got drafted that we didn't pick might not have even been starters this year, for all we know. Let's see, Bears, they wouldn't have, they had Justin Fields. I mean, I guess we're getting a lay of the land here, the landscape of the NFL. Where are our dev QB? Okay, Kovacs, 37 and 16, 4,800 yards. Pretty good. I mean, our guy might get MV, you know, offensive rookie of the year over him. Chet, man, okay, well, there you go. There's the guy that's winning. The guy that took over for Tom Brady, 5'11", 220. He was the scrambler quarterback. Oh, I don't even get, need to look any further. Beltran was not the most productive, and he's in our own Freaking conference, so we're probably not going to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. Sucks. Miles Sanders, first year over 1,000 yards. Happy for him. 12 touchdowns receiving. We have 1,100 yards, 15 touchdowns. Quez Watkins, he could be he could be getting a dev trade. Got him a new contract. Uh, 944 and 5 for Devontae Smith. Almost 900 yards, 7 touchdowns for Jalen Rager. 780 and 7 for Dallas Goddard. And on the defense side of the ball, 143 tackles, 4 sacks for Eric Wilson. 11 sacks. Dean Finley, our new superstar defensive end. Eight and a half sacks, Fletch. Seven and a half for Benson, the rookie, who has a star dev. He was a hidden dev star. Fine. I mean, the fact that we're drafting the best players, I'm not going to be overly upset if they're not constantly bringing back, you know, that superstar dev trade in return. Um, interceptions, a little bit low. A little bit low for the team. Quick look at the yearly awards. MVP went to Alvin Kamara, dominated by the running backs, which, I mean, some people seem to be upset about that. I mean, I guess from a realism standpoint, yeah, you know, I guess, but... I kind of think that's always cool for Offensive Player of the Year. Beltran coming in at number nine. Defensive Player of the Year, Aaron Donald. Offensive Rookie, they went to Chet Mann. Beating out Beltran is what it is. Defensive Rookie, they went to Juan Hanna. Jeez. Bucks just staying on top. Benson there at number two. Wiggins at five. Then quickly here for the rest of the awards. Just dominated by New Orleans Saints. That's where we're going to go, man. That's the echelon we need to try to reach. But here in year three, at least the drought has ended. We are back in the playoffs with a rookie quarterback, this time taking on Aaron Rodgers and the 12-5 and Rams. Okay, that looks weird. Looks weird. Super weird. Let's see what happens, man. The young gunner, Beltran, one of the best young quarterbacks in the NFL going against Aaron Rodgers, who's very much looking for another Super Bowl ring going on his resume. Let's be honest, Aaron, if Aaron Rodgers doesn't end up winning his second Super Bowl, I don't want to say he's overrated. I'm just going to say that he underperformed, I think. And it's a team game. It's not really fair on him. But for a quarterback that's that as good as Aaron Rodgers is, it's he needs more than one Super Bowl, I think. Kind of needs like a Peyton Manning kind of deal. Uh, but in this game, we're keeping it close. We had the lead for most of it. We kicked the field goal, tied up at 20, going into the fourth quarter. Everything to play for here. Get the touchdown. Our defense getting... You know, getting destroyed there a little bit. Instant touchdown for the Rams to respond. But we have the ball. Kick the field goal. Defense just needs to not give up any points with a minute 42. And what do they do? Well, they let them get into field goal range. And we're going to overtime. We have a chance. There you go, man. We had a chance. We had the ball first. And we decided to punt. Beltran did not have a good game. 57% completion percentage. Aaron Rodgers didn't have a good game either. Three touchdowns, two picks. Was not a game won by the quarterbacks. 110 yards, two touchdowns for Miles Sanders. 86 yards for Devontae Smith and a touchdown defensively. Two sacks, Finley. We had a pick for Scott and Maddox. Going to be one and done. But uh, at least our team's finally starting to trend in the right direction for year four. Year three season recap. The Niners took it to the Browns. 35-32. Dre Greenlaw 
outside probably had a pick six or like a fumble recovery for a touchdown gets the mvp there congrats to trey lance and the 49ers let's take a look at our team do we have any dev trades i'd love to see quez watkins go up it's probably the only one and he did quez watkins wanted to start yes i was right in the world beltran based off of his performance got himself a super yeah, let's go let's go man right the ship superstar for him Committing with Quez Watkins is panning out. Very, very happy. Lane Johnson didn't retire. So while we're one and done, a lot of good. A lot of good came out of this year. Wiggins is a superstar dev too. Let's go. Towns went up dev trade to superstar. We're winning a Super Bowl. We are winning a Super Bowl in this rebuild. Well, I was like, man, $86 billion of salary cap. What? Immediately, I was like, oh, that's great because, you know, we didn't have to pay Jalen Hurts. Maybe that salary, not having that on the books is going to help us out. And then Brandon Brooks retired. Lane Johnson retired. That's that's why we got a lot of money. And not only did they retire, there is there is no one there that's really going to, like, I'll, I'll sign. I'm, I'm about to get, like, I'll get DeCastro for one year just because just there's no way that I'm going to be able to hit on... I might hit on one lineman that can either play guard or right tackle. No way I'm finding two in the draft. So I wish there was better targets in free agency. I'm not just going to spend money because I have money. So let's see if we can get to cash out to kind of be a one-year band-aid at right guard. And then at wide receiver, I know we just re-signed Jalen Rager. But, uh, you know, a little bit of Canadian bias here. Claypool is a better player. Rager has not gone up a dev trade. So, I mean, hey, you could have four wide receivers. The fourth wide receiver gets some targets, gets some production here in Madden 22 Sim. And that way there we could have Claypool. I mean, a guy like that, put him in the slot so we could have, you know, Quez and Smith on the outside. I like that. I like that wide receiver room. And then if we don't get Claypool, he goes to Dallas. I'll be very upset. We still have Jalen Rager as a fallback. Respects. Respects to both of you. Great players. With that, we were able to get both of our targets. Chase Claypool, David DeCastro. Welcome to Philly. Not a good draft. Not a good draft to go in. With the holes that we had. These are like the best. These are the, the best players. We got Hobson at tackle. I don't have to get him yet. He's a late second rounder. We have Paris in the fourth. Who I believe is a mid first. And then we have a... It's a power rusher, man. I need... Like... I guess go this guy. Seth Parrish. 75 normal. Number 10 in true value. Getting him at 20. Could take over for Davion Taylor, potentially, for our linebacking core. But, I mean, it's not a scheme fit. We need a coverage guy more than anything. Yeah, it's just bad draft. A bad draft to be like, we're going to kick this guy to defensive end. Might be our first bad draft of Madden 22. Uh, Hobson, he's the only guy left on our draft board. I'm hope like, hail Mary that this guy has a star depth, like a 71 star depth or something. Because he is almost certainly going to be the, the replacement here for Lane Johnson. I'll take, I'll take a 70 hidden dev. Number 63 in true value. Got to throw him to the wall. Okay, we're very lucky. Very, very lucky. Draft luck continues here for C4. I said about the draft after that selection because my board was shot. And the computer helped me out, man. It's not as bad as it's been in your past. Third round, we got Holcomb. 70 normal dev. We got a tight end. Deshaun Hammond. 71. Not bad. Couple guys in the 60s, whatever. But the fact that we were able to get this guy, hidden dev lineman, very good. So our opening day roster for year four for the Philadelphia Eagles rebuild. So changes on the offense. Brandon Brooks, Lane Johnson retired, replaced with David DeCastro. And our second round pick, Hobson, 70 with a dev trait. Got a lot of work to do. Living in the shadow of Lane Johnson. But could be a lot worse, man. We could have just not hit on any tackles and had a complete liability. Had to hit free agency or something like that. Quarterback hit on the dev trait. Beltran is now a superstar Hopefully he continues to play like he did last year. Can lead this team back to the promised lane. 95 throw power. I mean, he's a beast. I'm very happy with that selection. Very happy that he did go up a dev trade. We have Smith. We brought in Claypool in free agency to make up a pretty, you know, we're four deep. Quez Watkins had a breakout year last year. Went up dev trade. We still have Rager doing his thing. So I'm, I'm very confident in our wide receiver room. Defensively, very good. This has easily been like the, the, the creme de la creme of this rebuild so far is how we've rebuilt this defense. Josh Sweat, superstar, X Factor, and Fletch. Benson, who we drafted. Finley, who we drafted. We got Slayer still doing his thing, but we have two superstars that we were able to hit on in the draft Rutledge 
and Wiggins. You move Devontae Max to free safety. Linebacking core is still fairly solid. Probably the position we might want to try to get a little bit better at because Wilson's most likely going to start regressing soon. Davion Taylor hasn't really taken his game to the next level, but at least Towns has been a beast. Uh, Ward, who we drafted, has also been fairly solid for us at strong safety. So, I mean, I'm really, you look at this team like, if we can get a linebacker or two in free agency, like we have a, get a good roll of the dice there for year five, if it goes to a year five, well, it will be. And then, you know, sure up the offensive line a little bit. This is going to be a complete roster that absolutely, between this year and next year, should be right in the conversation for Super Bowl contender. Midway point of year four, coming off a massive 39 24 victory over Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. The 85 overall Philadelphia Eagles are 5 and 3, tied for first place in the NFC East. Players to negotiate, these are the guys that we want for the final year of the rebuild. So I think there's some pretty easy decisions here. Hopefully they don't retire. Fletcher Cox first. We'll come back to the table. Devontae Smith, need him to be part of this team's plans. I'm very happy with the way that he's developed. We get him locked up. Jason Kelsey. Would love for Jason Kelsey to be here for the entirety of the rebuild. He resigns. You know, again, kind of same scenario for Darius Slade. We have so much salary cap that if I can get these veterans, even just on one new deals, that's going to be beneficial to the team. Let's give Landon Dixon a little bit bigger of a contract in terms of length so that it uh, not as big of a cap hit next season. I think Maddox at free safety is also probably, I mean, he's fine. I think that's the, he's fine. There's a chance that maybe there could be a guy in the open market, but. I don't really want to risk that too, too much. Sure, we got Thick Boy Punter. He's been fine. That's got to remember, Alex, this guy came in the trade, the Zach Ertz trade. He's been here doing his thing. He's been a solid punter for us. I think I, I respect Kenny Gainwell enough, and I was so hyped about that selection that I'll keep him as our RB2 for the entirety of this rebuild. I mean, beyond that, I'm not overly concerned about those guys. So, yeah, man, if we can, you know, hammer out a new contract, Fletcher Cox, we're looking real good this year and real good next year. The end of year four, made the playoffs again, 9-8, and eight, not an overly impressive record. But you can see from an overall standpoint, we've rebuilt the Eagles very well. So just get, we have enough talent to get our foot in the door. Just going to get a little bit of momentum here in the playoff push. And 10-7, and seven, I mean, they, I assume they got Jordan Love. We'll take a quick preview of the Packers before we hop in the sim because we, we're still sim and it's not year five just yet. Um, but happy with the team, man. Happy with the way that the guys are growing. I had a bunch of dev trade scenarios that no one actually hit on, which is unfortunate. But let's look at the stats. I mean, okay, let's look big picture. I think this is going to be like the new way that we try to format the end of season stats. We'll just look here at the, the side here, see who did what. 5,600 yards, 45 touchdowns for Mahomes, 45 touchdowns for Joel Davis, 45 touchdowns for Russ. Whoa, 2,200 rushing yards and 27 touchdowns for Nick Chubb. Nothing too crazy from a receiving standpoint. I mean, obviously, Deontay Harris, those are three guys that I really hope there's no way Deontay Harris is still on the Saints. But those are all originally Saint players. And also, full credit, Alvin Kamara. I got to take a look at that. Alvin Kamara had 79 catches, 1,400 yards, 19 receiving touchdowns. Khalil Mack with 27 sacks, 7 picks, Jalen Johnson. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Look, stats and awards. Let's look at Alvin Kamara first. Then we'll take a look at our own team. Because I got to see what the hell is going on here. Uh, Alvin Kamara, finish the year with... Um, Alvin Kamara finished the year with 3,000 yards and forty plus touchdowns. Um, Sim stats need some work. That's all I'm going to say. Beltran, 4,000 passing yards, 31 touchdowns, 13 pick, picks. What What did I just see? What did I just see? 1,100 yards, 14 touchdowns, Miles Sanders. No 1,000-yard receivers for Philly this year is what it is. Defensively, Eric Wilson, over 100 tackles. Same with Towns. We have 12 sacks, Finley, 9 for Sweat, 9 for Fletch. Two picks, Ward and Maddox. But, oh, just... It was in comparison to uh, to Alvin Kamara with thir- f- 43 touchdowns. Like I wish, uh, yeah, just to say, 3,000 yards, 43 touchdowns. I think it's fair to say, let's just hope we don't run into the Saints. 
Here, we start with the Packers. They have Jair Alexander, Kenny Clark, and this guy, Kai Walker at running back as their X-Factors. Aaron Jones, uh, you know, a little suspect that they would draft a running back with having Aaron Jones on a big contract. But we're a little bit into the rebuild, so not, you know, it's not like they did it year one, I suppose. They got Bakhtiari still doing his thing as a superstar. It's going to be a tough game, but I think one of them we should win. All right, NFC. There we go. Is this Enrique? Enrique, uh, Enrique Beltran. Number 15. This is going to be a big game. Front of the fans at the link. I think it's going to be our first playoff win. Look at that, man. 14 points. Green Bay cannot hang with us. We're just, we're just picking on Jair Alexander at this point. We have too many weapons. The addition of Chase Claypool. The addition of David DeCastro. I mean, he's won some games with the Steelers. Veteran presence. Who needs, you know, who needs, I'm not going to say who needs Elaine Johnson or Brandon Brooks, but who needs to be upset and just, not move on from them. We, we were able to persevere, get a brand new right tackle, doing the damn thing, and hopefully we don't choke this. Hopefully I wasn't counting the chickens before they hatch. Come on. Come on. Come on. See this one out. 38-24. It's looking pretty good. Got very close. Got too close for comfort, but we were able to find a way to, And look at that. Five touchdowns from Beltran. He's feeling He's vibing this year. Out dueling. Jordan Love, no picks, 252 yards, 76 yards, Miles Sanders, two touchdowns go to Devontae, two to Quez, one to Claypool, let's go, defensively Towns, we had nine tackles there, sack and a half, Benson, sack for that guy, interception for Eric Wilson, and the Eagles, are moving on, fuck, got prayers, prayers, prayers to the Eagles right now, for what they're going to have to try to overcome. The greatest sim team. The greatest sim season. I'm not even going to exaggerate. That is the best sim season I've ever seen. No, it's definitely a bug or something that needs to be tuned. And is not working as intended. It still happened. And it's still in all of my years. Playing Madden. Doing Madden rebuilds. The craziest sim season I have ever seen. So... I mean, we're doing okay. We got them to 14. We tied up 14 in the fourth quarter. Our defense not getting the stop when we need to, but our offense goes down the field and ties up at 21. But I don't know, man. Our defense, ooh. Okay, we're going to OT. Did not win last time. Last time our game went to OT in the playoffs last year. We did not, did not win. We have the ball. We have an opportunity to win. I'm not going to be upset because at least it's not just like the Saints get the ball and they go down the field and score. Third down. We have to punt it. They punt it. We literally just have to get in field goal range. I hate the Saints. I, I just hate the Saints. I feel like they're a, they're a team that Philadelphia always loses to. So I'm going to go, uh, we're going to go slants here. I'm going to give a little bit of gameplay. Usually I don't do this till year five. I hate the Saints. I hate losing. Like the Saints and the Seahawks are the two teams that if Philadelphia could just. Ah, come on. This is, that wasn't a good slant. Philadelphia. Oh, come on team. Come on. Help me out. Help me out here. Help me out. Ah, no, they got, they got the field goal. Slants did not work. Philly just can't ever beat the Saints. I think we did an okay job. The fact that we didn't have Alvin Kamara go for 1,000 yards in this game, I think, is the tell. He had 100 plus. We did an okay job, man. Only 150 yards for Alvin Kamara. Only. And that's a win. But we got to retool, regroup for year five. At least the Saints didn't win. In the recap, it is another Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes is the MVP. Let's take a look at uh, our team. Did our squad, do we have any dev traits, juicy dev traits going into year five? On the offensive side of the ball, we have uh, nothing. And on the defensive side of the ball, actually, well, on the offensive side of the ball, we found out that the dev trait for Hobson is star. And then on the defensive side of the ball, Towns has gone up to a superstar X factor. Let's go. What did, what did we got? Reinforcement ability. Cool. Davion Taylor went up to a superstar. Cool. Wins. Those are wins for our team. And the one thing I was worried about as soon as we went into retirements was Fletcher Cox retiring, Darius Slade potentially retiring, Kelsey potentially retiring. They're all here for the final year. All right, so look at the available free agents. I'm not usually someone that wants to cheese the draft or cheese the board or anything like that. We're looking at Petonio because I need a right guard to replace Brandon Brooks. I got Jenkins here. I'm paying a lot of money. You're going to kick him over to be the right tackle. Even though you know we hit on that rookie with the dev trait. It's year five. We, we need to put the best players on the field. I also am going to do something that just, I have, it's a stra strategy move. 
You look at your defensive end, Aaron Donald, is there. We're a team that's going for a playoff Super Bowl run. He could be an outstanding defensive tackle to play with Fletcher Cox. Dallas is the top bit. So the fact that he would be an impact to our team more, would be good. But the bigger thing is making sure Dallas doesn't get him at this point. So that is our plan. I'm not just trying to make the greatest team ever. 100% if Dallas was not going to get him, if any team in the NFC was not going to get Aaron Donald, I wouldn't touch him. I would just keep rocking with what we got. But this is 100% make sure Dallas doesn't get him. And very nice. Got all three of them. Tevin Jenkins, Aaron Donald, Joel Batonio. Welcome to Philadelphia. We're, we're winning the Super Bowl. And really, when you look at our team, the only spot that we could potentially hit on, like, something that could be an upgrade would be linebacker. So this is the best linebacker. He's going to go in the late fourth, but he's a mid-first round talent. Junior Newman, 76, normal number 13 in true value. You know, it's, it's year five draft is what it is, man. You're not going to get really anyone impactful. Final draft recap. Not bad, man. It's, we got uh, new, the Newman guy, 70. He's actually he's feeling good in the defense, up to a 77 with the boost. We got Sims, 75, normal dev, a 70 hidden dev tackle. I simmed out after this point. Sim didn't, you know, okay players, okay players, but we got Aaron Donald. This is it. You click on this video, wanting to see the Eagles be good again. I did a good job. I think I did a good job. I think I, did, I only did a good job, but I also maintained the integrity of like some of the players that a lot of fans, Eagle fans, like I kept my Lotta. Everyone wants to see my Lotta played well. I mean, there's no dev trace for Lyman this year. Again, going on the list of things I need in Madden. But he's still been good. We got Dickerson. We brought in Batonio and Jenkins to solidify that right-hand side of the offensive line. Goddard's been solid. Kelsey didn't retire. We replace Hurts with a superstar QB, Beltran. Sanders has been a little underwhelming. I would say, I would argue he's probably been the most underwhelming player on the offensive side of the ball. Really has, you know, I think he's hit, you know, we're what, year five, two years over a thousand yards, two years not. Um, Devontae Smith's been good. Gwes Watkins has been pretty good. Being able to keep him around, even though we're maybe, you know, forcing it just a little bit, pressing the issue. Claypool's been solid. Rager's, you know, role player. Defense. You know, this is, this is going to be the, the bell of the ball for this team here. We're going to put uh, Taylor there. We have Towns, X-Factor, Donald, Fletcher Cox, Finley, Josh Sweat, the three superstar corners, solid safeties. I signed Butker, 90 overall kicker, just because. Just because I want 12 wins minimum. For the season, we got the 12 wins. 12 and 5. We're 91 overall. I'm... I'm I have my doubts that there's going to be uh, there's a team that's a better overall than us. Quickly look at the stats. We got 5,500 yards, 51 touchdowns for Mahomes. That's not ridiculous in a 17 game sim season, I guess. Uh, Nick Chubb, 2,000 yards, 25 touchdowns. That's pretty high. Jacoby Myers, 1,500 yards, 13. We have 23 sacks from Chenna Wosu on the Chargers. Cody Henry, generated guy, seven interceptions, leading the league. Again, you know, stats are, I mean, you did a video break down the stats. And while certain things are good, certain things are still not good. Alvin Kamara, ladies and gentlemen. That's all we really need to talk about. If you ask AC4, how, how are the Sim stats looking? You're seeing it in this video. I will say this so far, it's not like I'm setting it up or I've been withholding clips that may make this game look bad. This is very much like in terms of like what's not great in franchise mode. This has been a rebuild that highlights a lot of it. Um... But looking at our stats here, Beltran, 4,100 yards, 34 touchdowns, 12 picks. Not bad. 1,100 yards, 10 touchdowns. Miles Sanders, acceptable. No 1,000-yard receivers, but uh, not bad. Almost 1,000 yards for Miles Sanders on the back. But having a little bit of an Alvin Kamara-esque season. Uh, defensively, uh, Towns led the team 111 tackles, 6 sacks, 2 picks. 13 sacks, Aaron Donald, 21 TFLs, 9 sacks for Finley, 8 for Fletch. Just imagine. I mean, obviously, at this point, they're both a little past it. But a Fletcher Cox, Aaron Donald defensive line is terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Look at the yearly awards. James Robinson won the MVP. I'm not mad at that. But also, you know, there's going to be people that are mad at that. Alvin Kamara, Offensive Player of the Year. Uh, Beltran Company, number 10. Aaron Donald, Defensive Player of the Year. Let's go for the rest of the individual awards. I don't think we're going to see too much of the Philadelphia Eagles, unfortunately. But it don't matter. We're in the playoffs. It's year five. It's time. Put it all together and win this Super Bowl. First up, it's Carolina Panthers. Team that we got to familiar, familiarize ourselves with because I'm going to be playing with them. We got McCaffrey and Stack Thompson as the X-Factors. Brian Burns, DJ Moore, Jeremy Chin, Sam Darnold, Johnny Hecker, and then two Randy guys as their superstars. I can only hope I can rebuild them this well. But their journey ends now because we are going to smoke them. So we're going to pop a Barrett. Beltran walking out to the link. 
So pretty much at any point, if we go down like two scores, two touchdowns, I I'm going to play and try to get our team back in it. We kick the field goal. So let's see what happens on this drive. If they get points, it's going to be time to press that button and get back in. Let's go. Two-minute drill. Let's get a touchdown before halftime. Let's go, Beltran. What do you got? We've had one slant with him so far that wasn't the best. That was just terrible angle by 39 there, and Goddard comes down with the ball into Panther territory just like that. We got angle smash, potentially hit Miles Sanders at the backfield, but they're smart. They will put the athletic Shaq Thompson on him, and we walk ourselves right into a sack. Not great job there by Mylotta. San Riddick beats him. Beats him on the speed move. Okay, let's try four verts. I'll be honest, and what little I have played, the four verts, is not an OP play. Coverage is pretty good. And we, you know, I'm not going to say we walked into that sack, but it's just a uh, turnstile. My lot is just not, not helping us, not being conducive to us getting down the field and scoring a point. You're third and 28. I mean, someone went up the line between Rager Claypool. Give us a chance. I mean, right bumper in the open, but that was a little bit late. To Devontae Smith, who comes down with it, and it gets broken up by Jeremy Chin. I'd hate to be one and done here, fellas, but I'm, I'm trying my best. Red zone alert. Third down. Okay, we'll come in here. Give us, give us a little bit better option. It's third and three. They want to run it. I already know this is going to be a pick. People are like, C4, why don't you just run it, man? Well, I can run it with the QB if we need to. And we're 100% in four down territory. Let's get out of the pocket. Get your blocks. There we go. We'll just run it with the QB. I'll take that. Solidarity. Let's go, man. He's a man of the people. Beltran. Let's go. Pull one back. Defense, they just nothing. We get a touchdown. It's... Okay. Got to get, gotta get like... So we have one big play here. Got to get one big play. And our defense needs to stop. And then we got to get another big play. And then, then we can continue on our playoff run here. Or our offensive line just cannot... Cannot stop or handle the Carolina Panther pass rush. I need time to hit these guys. And they're not affording me that time. This is a good offensive line. Step up in the pocket. Gets batted down. All right, we need Freddie Mitchell. Like, give me, just give me a pocket, please. Just give me a pocket. I don't know. I, I, I did I outside of that, honestly, here's 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 the here's the hard truth that we need to realize about this. We gave up 41 points, and our offensive line wouldn't give me time to throw the ball. Don't deserve to win. You, like it's the same thing that happened. What was the last rebuild we lost? Same deal. I threw a pick. I didn't throw the pick this time, but our sim defense that we brought in here, Donald, to help, gave up 41 points to Sam Darnold. And there was like, no turnovers. I wasn't turning the ball over. No picks, no fumbles. This was just an ass whooping. That's all it was, a, a pure ass whooping. And this is a perfect rebuild to throw in to just show you the bat that, that Madden 22 has to offer. So far, I would say that a lot of my videos have highlighted the good, highlighted the positive changes. But if you're thinking like, oh my god, man, this C4 is really getting behind this franchise experience in Madden 22. I mean, I don't want to just come off super negative just because this rebuild is my Eagles and it didn't go my way. But there was just a lot, a lot of bad was in this video highlighted. So we'll, we'll finish up just kind of looking at the stats of our Eagles team. Uh, I'm almost hoping at this point Philly makes some sort of change at QB and I can retry this rebuild again before we start doing the realistic rebuild series. Looking at our final stats, Beltran, he was solid. You know, the fact that we hit the superstar dev. And we made the right decision to move on from Jalen Hurts when we did. Miles Sanders, probably the most disappointing player, I think, from this rebuild. From a, an impact standpoint, I thought he'd be a little bit more impactful. Goddard was good. Smith was good. I think he pretty much averaged about 1,000 yards a season. Which, you, you know, that's about as good as you can get. Quez Watkins was a solid role player. Same with Rager. Can't I, I mean, would have been nice for someone else to break out with Devontae Smith. 
But again, with the dev, there was a couple scenarios. I'll put it this way: there was a couple scenarios. Quez Watkins, if I just wouldn't have cared what the bug, he would have been an X factor, I think, because he had a couple dev traits. He didn't hit, so I just didn't really trigger the the. Uh, you, know, you start the dev trait scenario, and then you have to re-engage with the dev trait scenario to actually get it and get it applied. I just wasn't doing that because he wasn't achieving his goals um, defensively. You know, Fletcher Cox was actually very good as well. I, I think in the sim, he was getting. For a D tackle, probably about 10 sacks a season for us, which I was very, very happy with. We had Josh Sweat go to a superstar X Factor. We had uh, the guy that we drafted, Finley, who, like, honestly actually earned a superstar X Factor, which is pretty good. I mean, that was probably for me the highlight of the first this rebuild. I don't know about you guys, was that first draft with the three first round picks, getting player number one and number two with our premier picks. That was, that was a good hit. Felt pretty good. Uh, I mean, we had, you know, Towns, another guy we drafted, hit X Factor. I think we drafted very well. I think that's. Probably the the point that you know I will remember about this Eagles rebuild is that Jesus I can draft very well and if you guys check out I did a draft scouting tips and tricks video you watch that you should be able to be able to draft and scout as well as I do and hopefully that can help you guys out so unfortunately one and done for the Philadelphia Eagles I mean we didn't even I think we had what one playoff win last year was our best run we we didn't even sniff the NFC Championship game but it's a tough roster. Not a lot of salary cap. Jalen Hurts was not very good. I mean, the good news is, it's like it kind of came down to that that Washington QB, right? That we passed over superstar. Wasn't like they did much this rebuild either. So, is what it is. I have to ask you guys now at the end of every video, what team do you want to see me rebuild next? I'll tell you right now. I'm leaning because I, I look at comments all the time. Denver. Denver had a lot of momentum in the last video. Leaning towards the Broncos, but I'll be checking the comments and I will do the team that you guys want to see me rebuild the most. Up next, it'll probably be out Monday or Tuesday next week, somewhere in that range. But thank you guys very much for watching. As always, if you're first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, trying to get to 150,000 subs, which would be awesome. It's a good achievement to hit before, say, the NFL season starts. Hit the like button. It's free. It's all I ask for to support the channel. Helps out my videos in the YouTube algorithm. And boy, oh boy, does YouTube not like putting C4's videos in the top. You know, you search up Madden 22. Not a lot of C4 content comes in that first little bubble. You can change that just with a couple thumbs up, like a thousand likes. It's a great starting point. But that'll do it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you back here on the next one tomorrow. Pink slips. Let's get it. Peace out.